Hi guys, welcome back. So last time out we began looking at CSS units and we looked at the difference between pixels and percentages and focused on also on the difference between absolute and relative units. Pixels are an absolute unit in that they set a fixed size and these days we need to consider uh, screen sizes of many devices so relative units help us to do that better than absolute units. Percentages are a relative uh, unit and we could set an image for example to be 50% of the width of its parent container and then the image could change size depending on the screen it is being viewed upon. Relative units set size or length relative to a parent element or another CSS property. Line height for example um, sets the height relative to the font size set on the same element. So in this video we're going to continue looking at two more relative units and these are M's and REMs. These both take their sizes from font sizes. Elements that have properties using M's um, are sized relative to a parent element and REMs or root M's are more consistent and take their size from the root HTML element. So let's dive in and learn a little bit more about these starting with M's. So M's have kind of a weird name. Pixels, inches, centimeters and percentages are all names that we're familiar with and we understand what those represent. But M's we're probably less well acquainted with. The name came from the print industry and originally referred to the width of the capital letter M in the typeface and font being used. We don't really need to know that, but that's where the name comes from if you wanted to know, and it is carried over into CSS. In CSS, 1M refers to the font size of a parent element. So we can set a general font size to a parent element, like a div, and then any headings or paragraphs that are children of that div would be some proportion of that. For example, we could say that our section has a font size of 16 pixels. We then size child elements relative to that with M's. Paragraphs within that section could all have a font size of 1M, for example, and 1M is one times the font size of the parent. So paragraphs within this section will have a font size of 16 pixels. Perhaps we have an H2 element that we set to uh, one and a half M's. And again, that refers to the font size of the parent element, which is this section. One and a half times the font size of the parent means our H2 will be 24 pixels. We can verify that by making the H2 24 pixels explicitly. And you see that those font sizes stay the same when we save. Going back to the 1.5 M's, we can check in the DevTools CSS panel under the computed tab and we see that the browser computes one and a half M's here to be 24 pixels. We could change the section to have a base font of 20 pixels and the paragraphs and H2s scale consistently. They're just some multiple of the font size of their parent element. We go back to 16 pixels and they scale back down. So M's take the parent element's font size and give you some multiple of it. One and a half times the font size of the section in the case of the H2. One times the font size in the case of the paragraph. So this scaling behavior we saw is helpful, but it can cause issues when we have nested content. So here I've got a selection of divs nested within each other, and each div has an H3 in it, and then the next div. So with this structure, which you might commonly see on many websites, if we give div elements a font size in M's, something strange is going to happen. So let's say a div with a font size of 1.5 M's. What's happening is each div inherits the font size from the previous div, which is its parent. It then sets its own font size to 1.5 M's or 1.5 times the parent. The next div is 1.5 times that and so on. So the first div inherits its font size from the body element. By default, the browser sets this at 16 pixels. So one and a half times that means the font size in this div is 24 pixels. The next div goes one and a half times that again. So it's 36 pixels. 
Next has a font size of 54 pixels and we see how quickly things are getting out of hand within the space of a few nested divs. To wrestle this under control, we can do a couple of things. I'll show you one in a short while, which uses rems, but for now we could explicitly set the font size of the H3 and not run the risk of it inheriting its font size from its parents. So because of behaviors like this, we're better off setting a consistent font size relative to something else. And that is where root M's, better known as REMs, come in. And we'll look at that shortly. Before that, we'll look at a few other characteristics of M's. Though M's are associated with font sizes, we can use them for other properties. With typographical properties like font size, we know that one M is related to the font size of the parent element. For non-font related properties like width or height, for example, one M is equal to the font size of the element itself. So let's look at an example. I'll use these H2s and I'm gonna give them a black background and we'll make the text white. And now when I set a height of say four Ms, this would be the equivalent here of saying its height is 96 pixels. And why is that? Well, it's because 96 pixels is four times the font size of the element itself. Height in a non-typographical property is not inherited from the parent. So font size is one and a half M's. So that's one and a half times 16 pixels. That is 24 pixels. Then our height is four times that, which is 96. So we see here the M unit is taking its size from the element itself in this case, rather than the parent. Again, this is because height is a non-typographic property. Okay, so let's look at REMs. REMs are a relative unit, but behave differently to regular M's. They are relative to the font size of the root HTML element. So if your root HTML element has a font size of 10 pixels, then one rem is always going to be 10 pixels consistently throughout your document. Two rems will be 20 pixels and so on. It doesn't matter where in a document you are, it doesn't matter if you're inside a load of nested elements, it doesn't change. One rem will always equate to one times whatever the font size of the root HTML element is. In modern browsers, the root HTML elements font size defaults to 16 pixels. We can also write this like this. And some people prefer to write it like this because pseudo classes have a higher specificity than standard element selectors, so it's a little bit safer. Often people will set a font size of 62.5% on the root HTML element, and that is 62.5% of the default browser font size of 16 pixels, which is 10 pixels. So this has the effect of setting one rem to 10 pixels. Doing it this way is better for accessibility. If a user wants or needs to set a bigger default font size, they can, and you will just be 62.5% of whatever they set, rather than explicitly being dead set on 16 pixels. Let's go back and look again at our issue with nesting. We again have the issue of font size increasing um, and amplifying within nested elements when we are using M's. We can simply overcome this by using REMs instead of M's. That's probably a little bit small, so let's say that the div's font size is two REM. We know that this is the equivalent to saying the div has a font size of 20 pixels. It takes its size from the root HTML element, which we have set to 10 pixels. Two root M's or REMs equals 20 pixels. So whether the elements are nested or not, we're not seeing that amplification that we would get from using M's. The font size is staying consistent. Let's also say the H1 is three REMs. The H2 is 2.4 REMs. And our paragraph is 1.6 REM. All of these elements are children of this section element and we were originally taking the font size from the section, but now we've set them all to set their font size relative to the root HTML element. So we can come to this section element selector and get rid of this now. So in short, we see that we don't have to use pixel values 
I can say something is three times the root element font size or something else is two times the root element font size and so on. When using REMS, if I decide that I want everything to shrink down on my web page, or I want to scale up depending on the screen size, it's as simple as changing the HTML elements font size. And we can do that quite easily using media queries, which we're going to learn in depth later on in uh, future videos. And we see now that when the viewport is smaller, the font size is set with REMS scale up quite nicely. So that's the basic idea of REMS. They allow us to define sizes relative to the font size set on the root HTML element. One more thing that I want to look at before we stop is rounding and spacing when scaling. Let's go back and look at our nested divs and H3s. I'm going to add a button into each div below the H3. And there are some pre-written styles for these in the CSS panel. We see that the font size is in M's, so 1M matches the parent, which is this div set to 20 pixels. We also have a border radius of two rems, rems not M's. So border radius is twice the root font size of 10 pixels, meaning border radius is also 20 pixels. So that is technically a fixed size on all of the buttons, no matter how big a button is, the border radius is always going to be 20 pixels. And a button can scale in size depending on things like font size, for example. Our buttons are taking their font size in M's, so they match the parent. And that's fine with this consistent font size on the parent, but if we go back to the nested divs and recreate, recreate the issue with the amplifying M's, we see that the fixed border radius of 20 pixels does not scale well. We're ending up with very different rounding on the corners of buttons that are supposed to be identical. We would want the border radius to scale. Um, so in this example, a border radius in M's rather than REM's will give a consistent border radius. So anytime you have an element that may recur on the page in different sizes, a content box, for example, if we want things like padding to scale, we can use M's so that they refer to the parent and the shape and space stay consistently. So M's do have their uses. Okay, so that's M's and REM's and REM's are really useful when we want to set consistent font sizes. We can set a font size to the root HTML element and then scale everything from there. Later on, when we learn to use media queries, we can set the root to change size based on the screen size. So all text using REM's will scale up or down perfectly. We've seen that M's can be used for font size, but they're perhaps not the, uh, that's not the optimal use case for M's. We have seen that there are inconsistencies when using uh, nested content, for example, but using M's for things like margins and paddings and border radius and so on ensures consistent scaling if you expect an element to appear across the page in different sizes, say a button, for example. So, okay, thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. Hopefully you found this video useful and now know the difference between M's and REM's and the optimal use cases for each. In the next video, we're gonna have one final video looking at CSS units. And this last one is on viewport units like uh, viewport height, viewport width, vmin and vmax. And these allow us to set sizes relative to the size of the viewport. So thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next one.